Japan's whaling industry has long been infamous as a major blow to the country's reputation and has been constantly attacked by the International Whaling Commission, or IWC. So we want to know why Japan remains committed to the country's whaling industry, despite the negative effect on the country's international reputation. Well, Japan has been whaling for as long as 1946. The practice was first introduced by the Supreme Command of Allies Power or the SCAP as a cost-effective means to provide food for the starving Japanese population during the post-war period. Despite not being part of a Japanese typical diet, well meat was widely eaten at school lunch, dinner, and even some other meals which created a whole generation of Japanese who grew up eating well and became the heavy supporter of the industry today. In fact, one of the most common cited reasons for the Japanese support for the welling practice is that they miss the flavor and the nostalgic memory that came with it. In the study conducted by the University of Kobe Yamate, the Japanese has a very split opinion about the whaling issue. After the international ban on whaling in 1982, the Japanese whaling industry circumvented the verdict by using the hunt for research quota to continue the whaling practice in places like Antarctica Ocean and sometimes getting disturbingly close to the places like Australia and New Zealand border. Once the research is done, the means is sold to the commercial market, which attracts criticism from various members of IWC who saw the practice as the abuse of whaling research right. However, the main reason for the Japanese whaling practice is far deeper than the scope of tradition. Despite having been defiant to the international condemnation for years, the Japanese whaling industry is in fact a dying one and might not be able to even sustain itself without massive government subsidy. In 2013, the whale meat sold by the Institute of Cetacean Research was reduced to 2 billion yen or 20 million USD a year, down from more than 70 billion yen in 2004, which is almost 400 percent decrease in sales in less than a decade. The whaling industry also relies heavily on government subsidy paid for by the Japanese taxpayer, which reached as high as 900 million yen or 9 million USD per year in 2007, and is expected to rise ever onwards. The reason for this course of development might lies in the Japanese infamous murky public-private relationship. The Japanese private sector usually has a very strong influence on the government. That is because many of the senior government officials who fail to achieve high authority figure will have to be retired in order to reserve the absolute seniority of the top government positions. These retired bureaucrats will be unofficially awarded consulting positions within the private sector and provide them with a powerful lobbying power and direct access to the government top position without the usual burden of checks and balance. These people were nicknamed the Amakudari or the Heaven Descendant, which often cited as one of the major sources for various scandals within the Japanese government sector, from defense contract to the infrastructure project and many more. One of the published opinions about the whaling issue in Japan is that the Japanese whaling industry is one of the places targeted by the Japanese local government as a potential place for the Amakidari to reside. While this may or may not be the truth, the presence of this former bureaucrat definitely provides them with unnatural negotiation power for the older industry like the Japanese whaling. Yet one of the most important reasons for this uncalled support might come from the Western activist organization themselves. One of the published analysis on the Japanese whaling issue mentioned that the Japanese government view whaling as one of the country international fishery right, which is a major issue for one of the nation's biggest seafood consumers. The activist campaign on the issue might actually be viewed as a foreign pressure on Japanese domestic policies, which drive the country all the way into defensive. The Ming's whale, which is a primary specimen for the Japanese whaling industry, is also hardly an endangered species. And the cruelty of the whale hunting is arguably not an exception compared to other industrially farmed animals. Having to avoid IWC verdict by exploiting the scientific research is also a major advantage for the whalers. Currently, the scientific whaling operations are what justify the subsidy and free interest loans which are vital to the Japanese whaling industry. If the whalers are to be allowed to hunt commercially, both of this loan and subsidy will likely going to be disappear, which can be much more devastating to the whaling industry than a status quo. So to answer the question, the Japanese whaling industry is obviously in decline and unsustainable. Yet ironically, the reason why it has been kept alive for so long might originated from the very people who campaigned for the end of it. 
Thank you for watching Alpha Plus. If you appreciate our effort, don't forget to like and subscribe to get more updates. We are new here and your subscription will be a great help for us.